We've talked about the most memorable bosses in Elden Ring, but how about the most forgettable? Due to the sheer number of bosses in Elden Ring, we're only going to be talking about the major bosses in this video, so no mini dungeon bosses like the Cemetery Shade or the Erdtree Avatars will be featured. Only bosses you can get an achievement for defeating. But first, if at any point you enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like, it'll really help me grow this channel. Subscribe if you're new and comment below what boss you think is the most forgettable in Elden Ring. With that being said, let's get into the video. First on my list, I have to go with Estelle. And while hardcore players and Ronnie enthusiasts may disagree, I think the vast majority of players will fight this boss one or two times then never think of him again. Me personally, I could care less for Estelle. I think his moveset is really boring and he's uninteresting to fight, although his lore is really good. If you don't know, basically Estelle is a star that attacked an eternal city aka Nokrin or Noxtella or maybe both, I'm not entirely sure. But aside from interesting lore, he has nothing else going for him, unless you want the bastard stars. And when you top it off with having to go through the Lake of Ra just to get to him and all of Ronnie's quest, it's just not worth it to fight him, making Estelle one of the most forgettable bosses of Elden Ring. It honestly amazes me that the Leonine Misbegotten even has a trophy to go with it. A glorified Evergel boss is what I view the Leonine Misbegotten as. It's uninteresting, the moveset is mild at best, the lore is okay at best. It's a fight that's way out of the way at the bottom of the map. After your first or second playthrough, I doubt you ever fight this guy again. It's just not worth it unless you want the Grafted Blade Greatsword. And by the time you get there, you've probably already overleveled and beat him in three hits. Not only is the Leonine Bisbegotten a forgettable boss, he's just a bad boss. It feels more like a mob or any other regular enemy. In my opinion, this boss is actually really cool. Unfortunately, being cool doesn't mean he isn't super forgettable. While I do like Dragonkin Soldier's moveset a lot, and I think it's a fun fight, everything else about him just doesn't deliver. The lore seems interesting, but in reality, there isn't a whole lot there. The Dragonkin are just kind of brushed over on that front. He drops Frozen Lightning Spear, which is pretty decent actually, but only if you're speaking into faith, obviously, because it's an incantation. So all in all, Dragonkin Soldier is kind of just there in Noxtella. It's disappointing actually, because I, I really wanted Dragonkin Soldier to be more. He's a good boss, like I said, but unfortunately, he just doesn't deliver. I know a lot of people will disagree with me here, but both the reindeer, yes, both the ancestor spirit and the regal ancestor spirit are two of the most forgettable bosses in this game. Basic movesets, uninteresting lore, unappealing design, lame arena to fight in. You don't get anything good for beating them, they both suck. I can safely say that unless I get them in a randomizer run, I will probably never fight these two again. I think most people like this fight because admittedly the ambience it gives off is really good, but unfortunately that isn't anywhere near enough, at least not in my opinion. Especially not in a game like Elden Ring where the main roster of bosses is just so stacked. Okay, the Mimic can go both ways, memorable or forgettable. For me though, I think I classify it as forgettable and I'll tell you why. But first though, let me preface this by saying that just because I think the boss is forgettable doesn't mean that I think it's bad. There are a lot of good bosses, like the Dragonkin Soldier for example, that are good, but they're just overshadowed by better bosses. Now that doesn't in any way mean that I think the Mimic is a good boss. I think the Mimic was meant to be a joke. FromSoft does that in every game, and it's one of the contributing factors of what gives Souls games such personality. Mimic will literally either be really hard or really easy. You literally get to choose. But like I said before, some bosses just get overshadowed by the greats, and Elden Ring has a lot of great bosses, leaving those like the Mimic and others on this list to be lost in memory. Let's talk about Fortisax because man, one of the coolest, probably the coolest dragon in the game. He has a different skin tone. You fight him in the deep root depths. He has death blight. I'm pretty sure he's the only dragon in the game that does that. Super cool dragon boss, right? Unfortunately, he's locked behind all of Fia's quests, which isn't a bad thing. There should be a boss at the end of every quest, obviously, but it means you won't fight him every run like you would others. So while he's super cool and has all this interesting lore, like, for example, fun thing to know is that Fortisax and Godwin were friends. And since Godwin died from Deathblight, 
Ortisex tried to save him but ended up getting infected himself. So just really good lore. But unfortunately there are other bosses with really good lore who you will fight more often. So like Estelle, Ortisex will be one of those forgotten bosses of Elden Ring.